Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing with our story about the ancient city of Zhuolu and the efforts to prove it was the capital of the Chinese nation's original ancestor Huangdi or the Yellow Emperor. Now, in order to verify once and for all whether the ancient city of Zhuolu was indeed Huangdi's city, the Hebei Provincial Cultural Relics Bureau in March 1997 dispatched a team of archaeologists to the site. Well, a month of investigation turned up some relics from the Warring States period and the Qing and Han dynasties. But that didn't help prove when the ancient city had originally been built. Eventually, the archaeologists decided that drastic action was necessary. They would dismantle the city wall in the hope of revealing remains from an even more distant historical period. Joan searched for similar cultural indicators along the city wall for several days in a row. Finally, under the base of the city wall in the northeastern corner, he found a 20 centimeter thick gray colored layer. Li Jun concluded it was probably an ash pit from very ancient times. In the ash pit, Li Jun found a number of fragments of colored pottery of a type he was highly familiar with. The technique used to make these fragments and the decorative designs they bore told Li Jun they had been made during the Yang Shao culture period. At that moment, Li Jun seemed to have solved the riddle that he had been working on so hard in his mind over that whole month. The pottery fragments found in the ash pit had to have come from the Yang Shao culture period. This was a discovery that Li Juan was ecstatic about. The reason was he could feel assured that the assertions featured in local legend and historical books were far from groundless. In the 1920s, archaeologists discovered the site of a Neolithic age human community at a village called Yang Shao in the county of Mianxi in Hunan province. It dated back 7,000 to 5,000 years ago. According to the methods used in archaeology to identify the habitats of ancient human beings, the cultural phenomenon from that period were collectively named Yang Shao culture after the village where the site was discovered. All other historical sites featuring the same or similar cultural phenomena found afterwards have all been categorized as belonging to Yang Shao culture. One of the important features of the pottery objects from Yang Shao culture is that they bear painted patterns. Most of the objects are jars, pans and vases with a small mouth and a tapered bottom and they are painted red with decorative designs in black. The pottery fragments found in the Zhuolu city wall are the same as those from the Yang Shao culture period. This tells us that 5,000 years ago, a group of people whose lifestyle bore Yang Shao culture features had settled in the region around Zhuolu.
Li Jun considered that it was highly possible that the ancient city of Zhuo Lu had been rebuilt on the site of a community of people from the Yang Shao culture period. It seemed a rational explanation had been found for an issue that had been troubling archaeologists for many years. The period between the Yang Shao culture period to the Warring States period encompasses more than 2,700 years. During this long period, people removed the earth from the sites of old buildings to build a new city and new houses. But in so doing, they inflicted considerable damage to the Yang Shao culture layer underneath. With this inference in mind, Li Jun felt that the preserved city wall of Zhuo Lu was built in the Warring States period. But if so, when was the city destroyed? In his book Annotations on the Classic of Water, Li Daoyuan, a geographer who lived in the Northern Wei Dynasty 1,500 years ago, refers to Zhuo Lu County as the former city of Zhuo Lu. This tells us that Zhuo Lu city had already been abandoned before the Northern Wei Dynasty. According to Li Juan's theory, the city of Zhuo Lu was first built during the Warring States period, and during the Qin Dynasty 221 to 205 BC, a county administration was established there. The city was in existence for a period of 700 years through the Han Dynasty, Three Kingdoms period, Eastern Jin Dynasty, the Western Jin Dynasty, and the Southern and Northern Dynasties period. However, during the Northern Wei Dynasty, AD 386 to 534, the city was downgraded from a major administrative site to an ordinary town. In the following 1,500 years, Zhuo Lu disappeared from Chinese history as the site of a county administration. Yet history books refer to it as Huangdi City or the Yellow Emperor's City. In 1914, Bao'an County was renamed Zhuo Lu County, and the name has remained in use right up to the present day. Yet, even though they could explain the rise and fall of the ancient city of Zhuo Lu, the archaeologists had failed to answer the key question. Zhuo Lu may have been inhabited during the Yang Shao culture period, but there was still no evidence that it had ever been Huangdi's capital. Clearly, further investigation was needed in Zhuo Lu itself and across the Sangan River Valley. Yuxian County, located to the southwest of Zhang Jiakou City in Hebei Province, is flanked by the Great Wall and the Taihang Mountains. To its east is Zhuo Lu County, and to its north are the counties of Yangyuan and Xuanhua. Its geographical location is certainly very special. When a cultural relics working team from Hebei Province conducted a general survey along the Sangan and Huliao rivers in 1976, they located a number of sites of Neolithic Age culture at Chaizhou Linglo, Sanguan, and Zhuanghua in Yuxian County, and at Lungwang Tang in Zhuo Lu County. During the process of excavation, archaeologists found a large amount of pottery fragments in the topsoil. The questions to be answered were from what periods did these cultural sites and artifacts come from, and who had left them? Chinese archaeologists could not come up with a clear idea about these stratified cultural deposits. In order to find vestiges of prehistoric civilization along the Huliao River in Yuxian County, they conducted excavations for six years, from 1979 to 1984, at many locations in the county. We were in the Yuxian, Huliao, Huliao, 
发掘了这个，比如说这个张可、这个三字绫罗，是吧？这个四十里坡和三观等遗址，总的发掘面积是五千平方米，对吧？这个、这个、这个说，出土了大量的这个地下文物。The San Guan site is located on a tableland along the San Guan River at San Guan Village in Xi He Ying Township, Yushan County, Hebei Province, and it is quite a large site. The stratified cultural deposits cover an area of about 200,000 square meters, and they're about five meters thick. In 1979, an archaeological team from Jiangjiakou carried out a large-scale excavation here. More than 20 years have passed since then, and the excavation site has been refilled. But at that time, archaeologists discovered the remains of six houses and two dozen tombs, and a large number of pottery and bone objects. All the houses that once stood on the archaeological sites faced south, with half of each building underground. The floor space was generally about 40 square meters. The buildings were laid out in an irregular way. The closest distance between two houses was just four meters. The walls and sleeping spaces were covered with a layer comprised of a baked mixture of grass and mud. The places where people slept were smooth and hard, and there was a fire pit in the middle of each house. All six houses were identical in structure. Archaeologists found many stone and pottery articles at the sites of the six houses. The stone articles included grinding clubs, axes, arrowheads, and weaving wheels. Most of the pottery articles were utensils for daily use, such as jars, bowls, and cooking pots. Most of them were made of clay or a mixture of clay and sand. The most attractive object found is this vase with a small mouth and a tapered bottom. When archaeologists examined these pottery objects closely, they discovered that their shapes and decorative designs were very similar to those of pottery objects found at the Yang Xiao Culture Maori Gold site. The Sun Guan found the this Yang Zhao culture of Maori Gold 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 苗地沟遗址、苗地沟啊遗址发现的东东西啊，基本上是一致的。那么就是我们很明确的说，这就是苗地沟的东西，苗地沟类型的文化。In the 1950s, Chinese archaeologists discovered two large Yang Xiao culture sites at Banpo in Lintong County, Shanxi Province, and at Miao Di Gou in Shanxian County, Hunan Province. Typical of the objects found at the two sites were vases like this one, with a small mouth and tapered bottom, as well as coloured pottery. The vase with a small mouth and tapered bottom of the Yang Xiao culture, Ban Po type, has a mouth resembling a good bottle, while the vase with a small mouth and a tapered bottom of the Miao Di Gou type has a mouth resembling lips. The main decorative motif on Ban Po type coloured pottery objects is a fish, but that on Miao Di Gou type coloured pottery is of a rose. This kind of culture originated at the foot of Hua Shan Mountain in Shanxi Province, and this is why some scholars believe the Chinese nation is called Hua Xia. They feel that the rose might well be the ancient totem of the Chinese nation.
For many years, famous Chinese archaeologist Su Bingqi has studied the characteristics of the utensils from the Yang Shao culture period, the development of these artifacts, and the period in which they were made. He has come to the conclusion that Yang Shao culture evolved from the culture that took shape during the legendary Shen Nong period, and he further claims this is the origin of the Chinese national culture. Shen 这一记载呢，与考古学上的仰韶时代大体是对应的。Some archaeologists and historians hold that the Ben Po type of Yang Shao culture evolved from the culture of the legendary Yan Di clan. They also hold that the Miao Di Go type of Yang Shao culture evolved from the culture of the Huang Di clan. Their theory about the two major clans settling along the Huliao River within the boundary of Zhang Jiakou at the same time is certainly thought-provoking. So 交叉的地方The evolution of a culture requires a long period of time, but archaeologists were unable to find any traces of the evolution of Yang Shao culture here. The cultural phenomenon had appeared suddenly and mysteriously vanished. Who brought Yang Shao culture to this place? Why did this group of people come here? Where did they go afterwards? The sudden change in cultural phenomena suggests that in that period of history, certain great events must have taken place to attract these people to come here. Later, other great events forced them to leave. The cultural fragments found in this place have provoked considerable speculation among the people of today. So if the Sangan River Valley and the Zhuolu area had been the site of major events 5,000 years ago, what were they? Once again, the answers would be provided by archaeological research. Wang Jianzhong, a research fellow of the History Institute of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, has engaged himself for years in the study of Yan Di and Huang Di. To unravel the mystery, he began from the origins of Yang Shao culture, and after digging deep into the records of history, he made an important discovery. Both the major sites of Yang Shao culture relics, one in Danpo and Xi'an and the other in Miaodigo, Hunan, shared the same parent. But this important discovery raised another question. Where had the parent culture originated? 
，要追溯仰韶文化半坡类型和庙底沟类型这两个文化群体的根源，我们可以追溯到大约距今七千多年前，生活在陕西省宝鸡市白水岭一带的先民们，是他们创造的这样一种文化。在这种文化里面呢，有非常典型的一种器物，叫做小口接底瓶，也被称作为葫芦形接底瓶。这种接底瓶里面呢。半坡类型的接底瓶，它的口沿呢是直口型的；庙底沟类型的口沿呢被称为纯纯型，也就是双纯型。所谓双纯型呢，就是在口沿上面又叠压了一层口沿。这两种口沿的接底瓶呢，在陕西的呃西安半坡、呃临潼蒋寨都有大量的发现。The approximate dating of the fish and bird patterns often found on these spots to about 5,500 years ago. Was confirmed by the finds in Bay Shoali. They suggested something in common shared by the different objects of Yang Shao culture. However, beginning from 5,500 years ago, Yang Shao culture split into Ban Po and Miao Di Go types. Does this have something to do with the two legendary rulers Wang Di and Yan Di and their tribes? In the Chinese language, the Jingyu is like this. Many years ago, there was a man named Shao Dian, who was a young man who was a son of a king, who was a king and a king. A king lived in the Jiangsui area, and a king lived in the Jiangsui area. After they were born, they had their own land. The king built the Jiangsui area, and the king built the Jiangsui area. From this point, the two are from the same group of people. According to some scholars, Ji Shui was the present-day Qi Shui River that originates in Shanxi province, while the Jiang Shui River was the present-day Qingjiang River on the upper reaches of the Wei Shui River close to Baoji in Shanxi province. The Yan Di tribe, all surnamed Jiang, expanded eastward by following the Wei He and Yellow Rivers to the southern areas of Henan and Hebei. The Huang Di tribe, all surnamed Ji, first migrated southward by following the Luang Shui River to Dali and Chaoyi, after which they moved eastward, crossing the Yellow River and following the Zhongtiao and Taihang Mountains to the northeast. Eventually, they settled by the Sangan River northwest of the Yanshan Mountains. If the Banpo type was from the Yan Di tribe and the Miao Di Go type was from the Huang Di tribe, the domain of Yang Xiao culture matched up perfectly with such a migration. Both tribes originated at the foot of Mount Hua and Shanxi in an area between the present-day upper ranges of the Wei Shui River to the west, the Lian Yungang Lanzhou Railway to the east, Hua Tao in the northern area of the Yan Shan Mountains to the north, and the Yangtze and Hanjiang Rivers to the south. The relics of Yang Xiao culture found in Zhuo Lu and Yuxian County in Zhangjiakou municipality proved that around 5,000 years ago, the Huang Di and Yan Di tribes came to this area. Researchers were convinced that the description of wars that took place in Ban Chuan and Zhuo Lu, described in a history book titled Historical Records Biographic Sketches of Five Emperors, was based on fact. The Battle of Banchuan pitted Huang Di's tribe against Yan Di's tribe. The battle is recorded in Sima Chen's Book of Shiji, otherwise known as the Records of the Historian. Now, all this raises an obvious question. Since they apparently came from the same family, why did they end up fighting? Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers and tuning again next time when we'll find the answer to that question. I'm Ji Xiaojun from CCTV International. Goodbye.